Okay guys, I guess there's a lot of confusion still about one-tailed versus two-tailed tests. Uh, there's a lot of noise in the background, I apologize, I'm in the middle of the airport lounge. Alright, I think we need to talk about what it means to have a two-tailed versus a one-tailed test. So these two pictures here are representing our two different types of one-tailed test, right? If our alternative hypothesis is that something is less than a number, I'm just using mu and zero as an example, but it could still be p, it could be a standard deviation, it could be anything. But normally when we're talking about doubling p-values, we're, we're normally dealing with means because we're living on the t-curve. We don't, we don't double probabilities if we're living on the chi-square curve, standard deviations and things like that. So really this situation comes up mostly when we're dealing with means, or sometimes we're dealing with proportions and then we're on the z-curve. Okay, if we have a less than, then this is our critical, right? This is our cutoff. This is the, um, the critical area, and the area under the curve represents 5%. And we're basically asking the question if our sample has a probability smaller than 5%. So our sample has to be far enough away from the middle, right? These are, you're always testing against the middle. And if it's far enough away from the middle, then the probability is the distance further than that. So if we're looking for something below the mean, we're looking for a small distance on the left side, right? A small area on the left side. And if we're, we're greater than, then we're looking for a small area above. But if we're a two-tailed test, then we're testing to see if our sample is far enough away from the mean in either direction, either really low or really high. And that's why we cut the p-value in half, put half below, half above. And then that's how we find the critical values in StatCrunch. There are two main things we do with StatCrunch right now. We run hypothesis tests using either z-stats, t-stats, proportional stats, or variance stats. These are where we run our tests, just like when we were making our confidence intervals. And then the other main thing we do with StatCrunch right now is we find area under the curve or we find values that correspond to areas under the curve. And that's where we use the calculators. These are like electronic versions of tables. They're basically just electronic versions of a probability distribution. So let's look at the T because that's the one we use most often. Let's just say our sample size was 30. So that gives us a degree of freedom of 29. And if we're doing a lower tail test, right, a, a less than, so a left tail test, we're trying to find the cutoff that has all 5% to the left, and then that would be our t-critical, right, that would be the, the bouncer, that's the cutoff. So now if we go and we calculate our test statistic, and it's smaller than that, we know it's going to be farther to the left, and therefore it's going to have less area to the extreme value, right, and so it's going to have a smaller probability and we're going to reject the null. So this t critical would be that negative 1.6 something that we see on this other page. Okay. If it was a, a greater than, a, you know, an upper tail test, it's the same idea. And of course, we all know that because it's symmetrical, it's going to be the same number but positive. However, if it's a two tail test, we need to put half in each tail and now we get a completely different number of 2.04. And if we go back over here, then these two numbers here are going to be negative 2.04 and positive 2.04, even though these are 1.6, right, and negative 1.6 because of the splitting of the area. So that's the critical values. Now, let's say you run your math, right? You run your analysis. You go into StatCrunch and you now go to t-stats, one sample with summary. You had a, let's say the mean was 25, the standard deviation was uh, like 12, your sample size was 30, your testing um, that, let's say the hypothesized mean was supposed to be 30, and then you're testing for a less than. And if you compute that, these are the results you get. Okay, so let's bring these both up on the same page so you can see what's going on. This means that we're doing a less than. Right? 
so we're in the blue category. And we just went and calculated a test statistic. And the test statistic we got was down here at negative 2.28. And that p-value of 0.015 represents all the area to the left of it. StatCrunch just gives you this area because it knows that you were doing a left tail test right because of the way you had it set up and because our p-value is 0.015 which is smaller than our alpha we would reject we can also see that this number is further to the left than this number which also tells us to reject okay we could do the exact same thing with an upper tail test and we would get the same results but now let's see we go back and edit this and we now turn it into a not equal to so we're now doing a two-tail test compute that you'll notice that the t-stat doesn't change so we're down here now and we got a t-stat of negative 2.28 right the same number all this area and you go well that area should be the same as that area why is my p-value twice as much because when you're doing a two-tailed test, it's asking the question, what's the probability that you have a sample that is this far from the mean in either direction? You can't sample twice. You're only going to have one sample that's either below or one sample that's above. And so what the p-value is, is it's taking the probability of getting something this far away or further, right, to the more extreme, and then it's doubling it because it's equally likely that you would have had a sample that was just as far away in the upper right direction. So that's why you get a p-value of 0.03 for this one. And you'll see that StatCrunch doubled it for you. You don't have to double anything. When you would have to double would be if we go back to StatCrunch and we use the calculators right so now you have the question of you had a sample size of 30 you had a test statistic right they give you a test statistic of negative 2.2821773 and then they tell you it's um, a two-tailed test and they want to know what the p-value is right and you go well this is a negative number so I have to do less than because I always want to the extreme and I look at my picture and that makes sense and the p-value it gives me is basically 0.015, right? But because it's a two-tailed test, I know that I have to also get the corresponding area above, so I would double this. But that's only because I was using the calculator. So the only time you guys are doubling is when you're using the calculators. If you're just running tests in StackCrunch, the p-value you get is the p-value you want. All right, keep working on that stuff. We'll talk about it in class on Thursday.